Hello my friends and welcome back. Today we're going to be doing a little bit more work on Como Rebi, the tiling window manager for Windows, and in particular we are going to work on this issue, static configuration loading. We are at a point now where we have a, a schema for our static configuration. Uh, where did that go? Here we go. Static config. This is the schema. We have an example of the schema file with auto completion and everything working with documentation. Very nice. So what I would like to do now is implement a way for people who have been using either PowerShell or auto hockey based configuration files, such as these to be able to quickly and easily migrate their configurations to this format. So I think what we have to do here is let me take a step back first. Um, when we first load the static configuration, we want to return a pre-configured window manager struct. And the window manager struct is what manages the majority of the state of the window manager at any given moment. So if we were to implement from window manager for static configuration, we could expose that the result of that um, through Como Rebi C and have it output as a JSON file, which I think would be pretty, pretty cool. So we're gonna do implement from window manager for static config. And it might be a try from, oh, let's, well, let's see. Let's see. Mm. So these are all of the fields that we need. And like, this is the most basic version, right? Just return none for everything. So we can run a little cargo check here. Ooh, interesting. Let me clean, because I think that is not accurate. Uh, so while that is chugging, chugging, chugging along, let's take a look at what we have here. So can we get invisible borders from here? Yes, we can. Uh, we need to wrap that in an optional pool value resize delta. Same thing, wrap it in an optional. So quite a few of these, thankfully, are tracked directly on the window manager struct, which is what makes this so easy for now. Uh, we can see that the check was successful. Uh, I was working on a different branch this morning, maybe just some leftover weirdness. I don't really want to waste time dragging down the root cause, dragging, tracking down the root cause of that weirdness, because that's not much fun. And we like to have fun when we code. Uh, focus follows mouse. Mouse follows focus. Um, I'm going to leave this one as none. That one is up to the person, I think. The border is a global. So, mm, border width dot load ordering. And then let's wrap that in an option. Hey, we're going to do the same thing here. Border 
Offset. Low. Oh, did you? Arc mutex option. So we got to get a lock on this one, actually. Hmm. Uh, and that implements copy, so that's fine. This is optionally a bool. Window. Hmm. Is this on the... Let's see, where have we used this? Border enabled, that's what we want. Border enabled, that's an atomic, so we can load it. And then we wrap the whole thing. Ah, wrong one. And we wrap the whole thing in an option. Then we're going to have um, option from active window border colors. This is a new struct that we defined purely for the purposes of this uh, struct. Let's do that. Okay. Let me think about this. You know what? Actually, I'm going to come back to this one. Let's undo this. For now, because there are a lot of variations that that one can take. I'll think through those. Um, default workspace padding. Let's load that. Uh, wrap it in an option. Default container padding load that and again store it in an option monitors interesting we'll come back to that one <clears throat> alt focus hack load um option I think this is on the window manager. No, it is not. Window. Hmm. Let's see how that is used. Hiding behavior. Dot. Load. Lock. Because it is a mutex. Go global work area offset. I think that's on the window manager work area offset. Um, below the individual rules, I'm going to set to none because. Yeah, I think those will have to be added on a case by case basis, just like this. So the two tricky things will be the active window border colors and the monitors slash the workspaces. Well, why don't we at least see if this works first? It's always nice to start off with something working. Oh, there is Premiere Pro. I was editing some Sekiro footage. I'm actually putting together this huge montage of all of the boss fights in my playthrough of the game. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be like two hours long, every single boss and mini boss in the game. But we will put that away for now. That was on uh, my second workspace. So, where were we? We were going to install these changes. And 
Oh, oh, okay. Um, we can't actually do anything with this until we expose a socket command. So let's do that, actually. That would be good. Um, is there anything with generation? Auto. Um, yeah, I'm sure there's, we generate some stuff, but I... Generate static config. That seems like a reasonable, reasonable socket message name. Now, this can just be... Oh, what happened here? There we are. Generate static config. Generates a static configuration JSON file based on the current window manager state. There we go. And now we need to implement this. It's gonna be similar to this. Mm. Generate static config. Cool, cool, cool. We're going to send a message. We're going to get something back. So the message we're sending here is the one we just created. And we'll handle this message on the Komorebi side as well. Uh, static config schema. Let's just copy you. Let's uh, rename this one. We're not renaming, we're trying to find the new socket message that we created. Generate static config. So the schema is going to be scheme oh so it's we're not we're not doing a schema this time right so let um static config is going to be static config from i guess self so i think self here is the window manager right uh uh, it doesn't implement copy, does it? Uh, I think we can clone this um, because we're just taking a snapshot. It doesn't really matter. It's just a one-off. So we have the static config. We want to... Can I inline this? Yeah. Nice. Then we'll send that over the wire. All right, let's try that again. I'm getting there slowly, slowly, slowly. Mm. What did I do there? 1997. I... Dude, I think this is okay. What's wrong here? Uh, remind me later because I'm recording. Um... Yeah, whoa, what happened here? Oh, I see. Brace in the wrong place. Now let's just thump that real quick. Mm. Huh, interesting. We cannot clone. Maybe we can like, what is it called? Shadow D 
de-shadow reference. Um, let, yeah, oh wait, I, I think I know. So why don't we instead implement this as from reference to window manager and hopefully that works. Ooh, not looking good. Oh wait, no, that's fine, that's fine. Does it need to specifically be mutable reference? Bro, really? Okay, wait, so let's see if we can make it a regular let reference equals self. Does that work? There's like, I'm not super familiar with this syntax. Um, or is it just this? As ref, as like regular ref. Oh, how is this implemented? I mean, you know what? That's cool with me. That is a okay with me. Uh, so what it's saying calling it as well clearly it does something because now it compiles and like this is going to fail now so do not tell me it does nothing useless as ref nah something is um something is fishy so um how to make a Rust mute ref a ref, I guess. Uh, okay, that, that seems like what I want. Uh, is that? No. Um, how do you convert to an immutable reference? Mm. Uh, okay, so maybe we do this. How does that look? Okay, that seems like the one. So thank you to Fallen Warrior 2K on the Rust subreddit. Uh, let's inline this. And let's install. We're getting there. Slow, slow, but sure progress. And a lot of work on this is just chipping away at it slowly. Even from the very, very first iteration of this project, it's just been finding one thing and chipping away at it slowly. Um, if I had approached this with like the image in mind of like, I want to build this huge thing, I wouldn't have even come close to this. Just pick one problem at a time and work on it. Preferably in the same code base, because then you can build something big. Alrighty. Uh, so we're going to do comma RBC. We have our new generate static config command. And something is not happy. Um, Ooh, I have never gotten this error before. And it's only... Huh. Very interesting. Why is it only... For that... Wait, no. So I'm trying to open... The socket 
back. Oh. So I think, I think, I think this has something to do with this. So let's self.clone and then we'll just take a ref here because it shouldn't be hanging. Oh wait, wasn't the issue that window manager doesn't implement clone? Right. Uh, <laughs> damn it. Um, wait, why doesn't window manager implement clone? Maybe that's a better question. Because there are times where it would be useful to clone, you know? I wouldn't mind cloning it right now, for example. I'm sure... Ah, it's because of hot watch. Damn it. All right. Um, I'm a little bit stumped. Uh, what am I going to do? So this was the reborrow, right? Um, so, uh, try not to debug, but let's... Um, well, this is actually config now, not schema. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Hmm. Uh, gotta take a reference. Oh, I gotta quit so I can install. Okay. We're gonna start. Yep. We have started. Okay, this time it worked. I don't know what the difference was, but it worked. That is not encouraging. Mm, not encouraging, but okay. So there's some stuff with this output that I want to change. Um, sud, uh, ignore none, omit none, skip serializing field. I think this is the one that we would like. Mm, can you skip serializing on everything? Uh, wait, no. Sud skip serializing none. Hmm. Uh, no. I think it's going to be min here somewhere. So, um, um, skip if um, third flatten third skip serializing. Huh, I thought this would be, I'm sure I've done this many a time. Do I need rust with, do I need surd with for this? Uh, I mean, I'd rather not bring in a dependency. Uh, oh, okay. Let's try uh, this one. Uh, if this works, thank you, LLXXBB on Stack Overflow. Uh, I mean, basically, 
all of these, right, are going to be skip serializing if none. Because they're all options. Serializing, if you don't know, is when you take a struct and output it to a format such as JSON or YAML or any format really. And deserializing is when you take data stored in one of those formats um, and load it into a struct. All right, let's try this. Let's run a quick check. Then install. Uh, I'm still running. Okay. Uh, there is one more custom thing I want to do here. That invisible borders. My default invisible borders is going to be this rect. And I don't want people to add this into their config if they don't need to. Um, oh, this one is 14. So I'm going to do F is default to put visible borders. We're going to return none else option from value dot invisible borders like that and then maybe actually i'll even inline this actually no that's that's not right i don't like that all right cool and install that once more And let's, uh, let's, no, not that one. Let's start. There we go. Much slimmer config. I like that. I like that much, much more. So, um, yeah, we got these two tricky ones. So let's open a thing here let's return none um so if yeah man we gotta we gotta get the colors border color border color single dot load um that's single let um, monocle. And I think it's stack. Stack. And all of these start with a zero. Mm, let has colors equals single is not zero and monocle is not zero and stack is not a zero right and then if has colors then we want to return you're going to have the else here. If has colors, we'll return active window border colors. 
we'll wrap that in an option. Mm. I, I don't know how to get the RGB back. Damn it. I don't know how to un... Mm. All right, I, this is going to be a none. I'm sorry. I don't know how to do it because uh, we use this crazy macro, right? Um, that I copy pasted from somewhere. Ah, damn it, wait. Um, single? Yeah, we use this crazy bit shifting thing that I don't understand. If somebody understands this, please feel free to open a PR. I would appreciate it. But for now, I'm afraid this one will need to be done manually by users looking to migrate to this configuration format. Monitors. So this is the big one. Um, let me monitors equals a vec for M and wait, do I have the, yes, I do in value dot monitors R right uh, yeah we got a monitor let's actually the, they're going to be in order anyway i don't need to do that monitors dot oh wait let's mm, all right, let's let's do something else here. Actually, let's implement another from. I think that would be a much much better way of doing this. Um, implement from monitor for monitor config. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna return self. workspaces yeah that's fine for now um value dot work area offset cool um and here we can have let workspaces equals value dot workspaces or rather let's for W in workspaces, let mute workspaces is going to be the vec, and we're going to fill this with another from. So this is going to be workspace config from W, which is not implemented yet, but that's fine. Workspaces.push. And then that comes through here. This is going to be slightly trickier, but let's see what we can do. Here we're going to implement impl uh, from workspace or workspace config. Uh, what do we need? What do we need? Okay, so some of the stuff we can get again kind of easily. Mm. Value dot name dot clone. Damn, some people don't name their workspaces. Uh, um, unwrap or unnamed. Yeah, we'll do that. Um, layout is going to be value dot layout. Should be able to copy that, right? Cannot move? Damn. Uh, 
Then nah, uh, God damn it. Uh, that layout equals match value dot layout because this is like an enum, right? If we have a default layout, we'll return that default layout. Custom path, we'll return the custom path. Tricky, 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 tricky. Oh, they both need to return the same damn thing. Ah, damn you. Um, mm, otherwise, none. And we got to wrap this in. And optional, I think this is what I want, but I'm not sure, to be honest. Uh, and then this, just got a dereference. Here we want to do the same thing, but the opposite, right? So, um, I just want me to just rename this to layout. Um, and we're gonna change this to custom and default is going to give us none instead is that right does this need to be a path buff what did i give you um damn yeah because it's it's deserialized we don't actually keep we don't keep a reference. All right, this is not going to be one that we can do anything with. Unfortunately, I'll have to make notes of all of this stuff. Layout rules. Value dot layout rules. Is that is that a thing? Okay, layout rules. Oh yes, yeah, this is going to have to be different. Hash map. Um, all right, let layout rules equals hash map new for ln value layout rules. What is the okay? Um, uh, threshold layout, match layout. We only care if it is this one. We're going to make this mutable. Um, and then we're going to transform this into a map. So layout rules dot insert is that the right one threshold um value we can take copies of those nice uh so those are the layout rules which, uh, i think we might need to again wrap in an option and we're going to do again something similar for the custom layout rules Ah, uh, damn it. I think it's going to be the same thing because we, we don't have that. Damn it. We don't have that. Um, we don't have, we're not storing a reference to where the custom layout rules come from. Sorry. I cannot do that. <laughs> I cannot do that. Um, we don't, we don't keep the data for it. 
value, workspace padding. Mm. These ones as well are going to be a little bit tricky. Um, because these are stored in the global state. Um, so to do figure out how we might resolve references in the future. Uh, I can add this here as well. Resolve file references, because I know I'm not going to remember what that means. Um, all right, so let's get the workspace rules. Uh, let's get the lock on that. That workspace rules. So what does this even look like anymore? Mm, what is this? So workspace rule is, I think that goes monitor workspace is initial. Is that right? I, I didn't actually write this code. This was contributed. So I need to check it out. Initial workspace. Um, yeah. Initial workspace rule. Handle initial workspace rules. Handle workspace rules. Ugh. So true is if it's initial. Uh, okay. Or in workspace rules. Mm, wait, no, I can't. Okay, it's a hash map, so we can we can work with the hash map. Uh, wait, what do we want to return? Uh, oh, we want to initial is going to be a vec, so we are going to have to iterate over these. Um, these rules that we have here for K, V, N, workspace rules. Maybe we need to dereference here. Yeah, we do. Um, and then workspace rule, I would love to monitor index, workspace index um, is initial much better um, identifier suite. Um, if is initial, we want to do initial workspace rules push. Mm, let's add these here. What is an ID with identifier? Is that the one? I believe it is, but I have no idea what that. Oh, we don't store the identifiers. Ah. Well, oof. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's only do it if, because the only ones that we can do with certainty are executables. And I think the majority of people use executables. And identifier ends with exe, then... Let's do that possibly clone, um, 
these actually we don't need anymore. So why don't we lift this one out and put it at the top level because we don't want to do anything unless we're not talking about an EXE. And let's split this out as well. Um, call this a rule. And then if is initial else, we'll add it to the other one. Uh, I think that's good. Let's format all of that. Uh, okay, yeah, we still need to backtrack a little. One oh seven. Wait, why? Oh, I don't want to return a value there. Honestly, we can change this to um, matches. From, okay, we need this to be from a reference to a workspace. There'll probably be some other stuff that comes up. Um, oh. Of course. When in doubt, just spam ampersands. Uh, so this is now all the way down here. And we're going to do monitors.push um, monitor config from M and again here we're going to change this to work on references. Ooh, cannot move. Okay, 117, let's check that out. In workspace rules, when we take references there. Yeah. That should do the trick, I hope. Uh, yep, yeah, and then we need to dereference the Boolean. All right, now we're getting somewhere. We are cooking with gas. I think my wife is nearly finished with work, so she may storm into the room at any point now at which point i will stop working on this uh but i think we're we're close just go and fix all these little lints and then we bring monitors in here right oh because it's an option we got to wrap it Option from monitors. Sweet. Very nice. Very, very, very nice. I like it. Let's install that once the thumping is done. And so I'm thinking. Another nice command to do in a subsequent programming session um, 
would be a command that just fetches the applications JSON or applications YAML rather from here. It's like you don't have to clone it out. You don't need to download it. You just have like Comer OBC fetch um, ASC and then it'll just spit it out wherever you've run the command and you can move it wherever you would like it to be. All right, let's get that running. It's, oh, very, very nice. Very nice. Uh, so we need to do the same thing to remove non-values that we, we don't want to show as nulls. Uh, let's, yeah, no, we can't do that. I wish there was a way to like, to make something optional only when deserializing, but make it mandatory. I wish there was a way to make something optional when serializing, but have it be mandatory when deserializing. Um, I mean, it's a hack, so maybe I shouldn't wish for that. Maybe I should just wish for the insight to make better data decisions early on in a project. Maybe that would be more realistic. All right. Nearly there. So very nearly, nearly there. Mm. Nice. And so I think the only other thing that I would have liked to have done, right? Oh, maybe I can do this. Let default container padding equals Let's load this. So like as in as far as possible, I just want to avoid having things in the config that don't need to be there. Uh, default workspace padding. So we're going to do if container padding um, equals default container padding, then uh, maybe that needs to, yeah, that needs to dereference. So if it's already the default, then we don't care. Else we care. Container padding. Um, and then so let's replace container with workspace. Nice. And then container on workspace, we can skip if, ooh, ooh. Mm, yeah, we gotta, we gotta do this a little differently. Um, let container padding equals if let some container padding equals value dot container padding, right? And um, I'm sure there's a nicer way to write this. All right, else none. If container padding equals default container padding, none. Else option from container padding. Lovely. Well, not really, but that's all right. Then we'll replace container with workspace. Uh, and then we don't need any more of this, right? Mm. How do I? <laughs> I really wish these were also easier to copy pasta because they 
kidding me, man? Just let me, let me be. All right, workspace padding. This is like the official way to do it, I guess. Yeah. That's workspace padding. And we'll copy the same for container. So we stick to the clippy style. I don't particularly find this more readable, but I don't like having clippy lints. Bruh, again? Again? And I wish it would give me the right damn thing the first time. <laughs> One, two. Workspace padding. Wait, didn't I just have it like this? Swear to God, do not suggest another change. Good, good clippy. All right, so let's stop, let's install. You know what, none of my workspace rules came through. That's kind of sus. Um, Huh, why did none of my... Because I definitely have workspace rules. What's with that? Ooh. Wait, what is... Let me debug this real quick. I think something is a little sus here. If identifier ends with E. Oh, some of them. Why do I have these as uppercase EXE? What am I on? What is wrong with me? Do I have issues? I clearly have issues. What the frick? When did this happen? I did not mean to do this. <laughs> All right, so I, th I think it's actually working. I was just being screwy. Um, uh, Damn, we do need a way. Oh no, that's not right. That's not right. Um, wait, I got the debug in there, right? So, huh? Wait, did I get the debug in there? What? Oh man, I was so close. What happened? Flew too close to the sun. Mm. Oh man, we're coming up on an hour. I think I should probably take a break, to be honest. Uh, so let's log out. Bruh, why am I not getting... Well, I mean, stuff is showing up. Oh, maybe that's why. But yeah, I need to, I do need these somehow to figure out. Oh, but I can't. Ugh. Damn it, maybe I can't do that. Maybe I will not be able to. Because...
No, oh, it's not debugging. Anyway, I need I need to be able to know. Or maybe I can do this like post facto. Right? Um Alright, let's 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 try one one more thing, right? Okay, so after we've done that, let's get the lock on this again. We're going to do the same for loop. Right. Um, for W and workspaces. Um, which is mutable. So for every time we go through there, we got monitor. Ah, God damn it. No, it's not going to work. Cause neither of these things track their indices. Oh my god. <laughs> I mean could could we do it down there? Should we push it even further? Push it real good? I don't know. Let's see. Um all right, we got our workspace rules. And we want to do this in monitors. M but we want the indices as well as the monitors, right? Yeah, and yeah, uh, maybe we don't need that. All right, so monitor. M I D X, um, and then we're doing another one here for W I D X W N M workspaces, right? Right. Uh, dot iter dot enumerate workspace configs dope. Oh my god, my life is just a series of questionable for loops. Triple nested. Exactly what they taught you to never do in school. Alright, um, close, I can feel it, I can freaking feel it. Um, so, if w dot initial workspace rules oh my god are we doing another one for w dot um uh i w s r in initial workspace rules Oh my god. If let some I do initial workspace rules equals W Oh god. What is wrong with me? Why am I doing this? ID with identifier if right if right would we want to do this here oh my goodness the pyramid of doom if iwsr dot id equals identifier
and either monitor idx is not equal to m idx or workspace idx is not equal to w dot idx let mute to remove equals Okay. To remove is going to be um we want to push this m i d x w i d x uh, IWSR.ID.clone. That's what we want to remove. And we want to do the exact same thing here. Workspace rules. Oh, gosh. No. Go back. Go back. Workspace rules, um, workspace rules, um, workspace rules, okay, seems all right, I think. I'm not sure why these aren't showing up. Um, to remove. Okay. Or RM into remove, which is M I D X W I D X and I D. Okay. You want to go into monitors dot get moot m idx let monitor be that uh, we can unwrap this because we know it exists. Same thing here monitor dot workspaces dot get moot. I know it's mute. I just like saying mute. We want to get that workspace for then we need the same we're we're just doing something similar here. <coughs> workspace dot workspace rules. Workspace rules dot retain a B retain. What does retain take? Oh, just the thing. R R dot ID is not ID. That should do it. Um, you want to do the same thing for the initial workspace rules. Um, dude, yeah, it's fine. I'm not going to change it. Oh, I should change it. I should change it. Initial workspace rules. Let's see. What does Clippy say? Of course.
Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, uh, let's go to 302. Monitor index, we need to dereference. Workspace index, we also need to dereference. Yeah, something is a little a little fishy here. Why are you Oh, because the the name is shadowed. Um Why don't we just call these rules in both um, to avoid the ambiguity? Rules, rules. True, we do not need that. Let's ditch that. Um, we'll just call these rules here as well. Um, run the font and the clippy. Bruh. Um, I don't want to do that. Maybe I'll come back and do that, but I don't have the, the bandwidths to do that right now. Oof. This has been a very mentally taxing session. Uh, all right. There it is. All of the correct workspace rules. Oh my god. I can't believe I did that. Um, so, right, workspace rules should not show if is none. I wanted to not show if is none or if is empty. Um, WS rules equals if WS rules is else option from workspace rules. And the same thing with initial, 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 yes. So then we don't have to have this empty struct here. Are you freaking kidding me? Naming error. Reaching the the end of my patience. All right, I don't think I am gonna commit this. I'm probably gonna come back to this, and clean it up. Um, have some stuff be, I don't know, either try from or. Yeah, God damn it! You know what? 
You know what? There, I did it. I did it. I made it an option. Now I'm just going to fix everything else. Uh, 171 value dot name. There. Are you happy, Rust? Are you happy? Oh, interesting. Um, oh, wait, no. That wasn't even it. Dude, that was not even it. Why did I do that? <laughs> um, that was not the one. I think that should still be mandatory, but, but, but. Oh, I'm losing it. Absolutely losing it. Okay, so even though I know I know we can unwrap, I'm just gonna wrap it in um, that's um, monitor equals monitors dot get moot m i d x. We already have enough pyramids of doom. Why don't we just add a couple more? Why don't we just add some more? Yeah, no. Huh? What happened there? Uh, oh, we do use the workspace index here. Triangles of doom. You gotta love them. All right. Nice. Uh, okay, so maybe that is actually committable. Run Fumped again for good measure. Nice. That's Gappa. Generate static config. New socket message. Oh, we don't want that debug in there. Where did that debug go? Generate. Yeah. There should be no debugs. All right. All the new stuff. More IPC. More comma IPC. And we are good. So let's update this um a new comma rbc command generate static config has been added to help existing users migrate to a static json config file um I should mention in the commit message. Currently, custom layout file path information cannot be automatically populated in the output of this command. I think that was the only to do, right? Yeah. And must be added manually by the user if required. Nice. Let's push. Oh my goodness. That was intense. That was intense. I have not had a programming session like that for a while. Um, let's make sure all of this builds on my machine. And get my window manager running again. 
There we go. Uh, let's just see the output one more time. Damn, this is really nice. I'm very happy with this. I hope that you all will be too. Uh, before I go, a couple of things. Uh, first of all, sponsoring the project. Even if you only sponsor a dollar a month, you know, it makes a huge difference to me. I really, really appreciate it. I would like to give shout outs to the current sponsors, to Aeon, Dylan, Tobias, Alex, Julian, and Hisayuki. Thank you all very, very much for your support. Uh, if you are not able to support financially, the next best thing that you can do is subscribe to my YouTube channel. You just click this link. You go over here. It's where you're probably watching this video. I hope it's where you're watching this video. Um, I'm trying to get up to a thousand subscribers so that I can join the YouTube partner program, start getting a little bit of ad revenue and supporting the project that way. The videos for Komorebi have a pretty decent view count. Quite a few of them are over a thousand. So if you're not subscribed already, please do subscribe. Um, if you have any uh, comments, suggestions, feedback, you can come and leave those in the issues, the discussions, or, or you can come and hang out with us on the Discord. Click here, it will take you to the Discord server. Man, I am wiped. That is it from me today. I hope that whatever you all do today, you have a great, great day, and I will see you back here next time. Goodbye.